All right, right here is the post section. Uh, basically what you do is you go over to post and the navigation and you click on add new. Uh, and basically what you want to do is the very basics of it is you add a title and some content and you hit the publish button. That's basically the overview of posts. Uh, there's a lot more details to it. Uh, first of all, you have your rich text editor here. That means basically it works just like Microsoft Word or an open office document. So whatever you want it to do, it will do for you. Um, such as if you want to hit bold, you don't have to know the HTML behind it. You just click the bold button and there you go. And the same thing applies if you want to do italics or strike through. It'll do it all for you. If you prefer to work in HTML, there's a tab over here that you can use to work in HTML. But if you want to just stick with a visual editor, you can just stick right there. Um, some, and it has all the standard options, bulleted text, uh, uh, lists, uh, block quotes, the left and right adjustment, uh, and ability to add links. And also spell checking. Uh, spell checking is kind of slow in WordPress. You might just want to stick with the uh, spell checker that your browser provides, and just about all of them provide one. So um, another good thing about WordPress is the uh, read more, and this is called insert more tag. And what that basically does is it allows you to cut off how much content you're providing on your home page. So if you only want to show a little snippet of your blog post and have people be able to go to another page to read the full thing, it kind of keeps your uh, front page compact and clean and sleek. That way you're not showing massive blog posts for all this content loading that people have to wait for. This allows things to go very fast and very smooth and just have your people scan over it to see what they want. Another valuable tool that a lot of people don't really use is the full screen mode. You click on this and this will put everything into your full screen. So if you have a tendency to write long blog posts or you have a tendency to edit things in a very, very stylistic way and you want to see what it all looks like, you can use this full screen option. So don't forget that that's there. It's a very useful thing. And there's also a thing called the kitchen sink. It's a very quirky little thing about WordPress. It's all the advanced options inside of WordPress. You click on it, and it'll give you the more advanced options. They're not as commonly used. Um, it has an undo and a redo and also this help section here. Um, but there's a lot of things uh, that you have in there that you're not going to use as often, such as your headings and stuff like that. But just know that it's there in case you want to use it. So that's the kitchen sink. On your right hand side, you have your publishing options. You can save it as a draft, preview it before it's published, and then you have these three uh, items down here. This is the status of your um, actual blog post. Uh, if you click edit on that, right now it's a draft because I haven't published it, but if it was published, it would say published. But you also have a couple different options. If you have a multiple author blog running, or if you want, if someone else has to review it, you can put a pending review on there. And that will allow people to basically say, hey, this is ready to be reviewed and published. I just need you to take a look at it first. So that's a really good option if you're a multiple author blog owner. This is your visibility is the next one. Um, right now the visibility is public, so that means that the moment that you hit publish, it'll start going on your home page immediately. There's a couple different options you have, though. First of all, under public, you can there's a little option that says stick this post to the front page. That's basically a sticky, such as in a forum sticky. Basically, it doesn't matter what else comes before or after it. This will always be in the top first post of your front page. So if you have something that's important uh, that you want to announce to your blog, uh, you basically want to put that as a sticky post, and that's how you do that. The next one is password protected. Basically, it'll still show up to everybody as a post that you can view, but in order to view it, after they've clicked on it, they're going to have to enter a password to see all the content. So this allows you to keep maybe uh, protected content under passwords, such as downloads and, and videos and premium content. You just put it under a password, and you can distribute that password to certain people for them to view. So it's a, it's a good feature to use, but remember that the password you have to give out. So the next one is kind of like password protected, except for no one's going to be able to really view, not too many people are going to be able to view this except for certain users. Um, Non-registered guests will not even be able to see that this is even a post if it's set to private. A private post is exactly that. It's for not many people. So if you set something to private and send somebody to it and they're not a registered member of your site, they're not going to see it. It'll actually show up as a 404 error. So something to keep in mind. Um, a lot of times you're just not going to use private posts. A lot of times you use either password protected or public posts. So, 
All right, and then the next one is when you decide to publish something. That's why it says right now publish immediately. So if I click on this publish, it'll automatically go to my front page in my blog roll on my home page. So, but if you click edit, you can adjust the date whenever you're going to post your blog. Um, a lot of people, when they first have a blog, they want to show that they have some content, so they'll maybe maybe put it in the past, such as, you know, maybe put it a couple months ago and make it look like an older post. But also another great feature about this is that you can actually schedule your posts. So maybe you want to do all of your blogging in one time frame and you just set to have it drip feed its content over the course of maybe a couple of days. So let's say you have 10 articles and you want to publish them once a day. Well, you don't have to go back every single day and publish it. You can publish all your articles at once and just schedule them to post on a different day. So basically this one I want to maybe schedule for the night, so I want this to go tomorrow. So I click OK, and it actually says schedule for, and this changes the schedule. So it's a really handy feature if you want to keep yourself organized and kind of maximize your time instead of always having to come back and do the same tasks every day. So Down here, next option is the post tags. Basically, these are little uh, keywords that you want to put in there to kind of let people know what this what your individual post is about. If it's about the uh, iPhone, you want to put iPhone in there. If it's about you know money, you want to put money in there. And it's also the more of the same tag you use, the more prominent it'll be on your site. Therefore, if you want to use maybe a keyword or a tag cloud, the more times you use the word money in there, it's going to it's going to show up as a bigger word in your tag cloud. Um, categories just a way to keep your post structured so that in case people are looking for a category. Um, that you had designated. Like I said, once again, if maybe if you were talking about iPhones, maybe if you were talking about an iPhone app, you would have an apps category. And that way people always, that maybe you always want to read your blog, but really want to read more about, let's say, the iPhone apps, they're going to go to the apps category. Down here is a couple of optional things. These are not required when you are posting, but it's something that maybe some themes use or maybe some plugins use. So just kind of keep in mind uh, whenever you're using that. So an excerpt is basically a summary of what your post is about, kind of like the stuff that's above your read more link. Um, some themes use it, some themes don't. Try it out with your theme and find out. So you're not writing excerpts for no reason. Uh, trackbacks, don't worry about that too much. It's not something that's really used that much. Um, custom fields. Uh, what you want to do is uh, that's something that also can be used by uh, themes and plugins, but um, if it's not used, then don't even worry about it. So basically, you can say, you know, videos I'm watching, you know, happy feet. And that basically, it'll show up in your theme. You know, it can, it can tell you your mood sometimes and stuff like that through a custom field. And also down here at the bottom is discussion. This is... Uh, the different things that will allow collaboration across your blog. Comments, basically, if you want people to be able to comment on the blog post, you just allow the comments. Allow trackbacks and pingbacks. Basically what that is is that whenever somebody links to you, it'll notify the other blogs whenever you're you know, posting an update or something along those lines. And blogs will also let you know when they're linking to you. So, But if you don't want to allow that kind of stuff for different privacy reasons and stuff like that, you can just simply uncheck them. And that about does it for posts. Um, basically, there's a couple more advanced options that we'll cover later on in other videos, but this pretty much does it for adding a post.